Hello and welcome to another episode and welcome to the Nissan Aria. Please remember to check out our other videos and to click on the subscribe button and tap on the bell icon so you get notifications each time we upload another video. The Aria's got a 63 kilowatt hour usable battery and a WLTP range of 250 miles. We found realistically it's more about 210. The Aria is a really big car, but I do like it. Florence said to me this morning, it's got a kind of Land Rover-esqueness to it. And it has in terms of its height and size, it's got a really, really nice front end. Um, it looks kind of mean and the lights look really good. On the top, you've got a sky roof and you've got various options where you can just have the blind back and the sky roof closed and you get a nice feeling of space. And there's Florence. <laughs> oh. Alternatively, you've got two options where you can have the sky roof all the way back or you can have it just on a vent. But it's really nice. I like that. Disappointingly, there's no frunk and that's something we've really become accustomed to and we use a lot, even if we go out for the day, but especially when we go on holiday. Real shame. The charge port's located here on the near side front wing. It's CCS, giving you up to 130 kilowatts but we've only seen 80 so far, which is a little bit disappointing. The wheels on the Aria look enormous, but they're actually only 19 inch, but they've got a really big aspect ratio, but that makes for a very smooth cushioned drive. There's a massive space inside. As you can see, there's Florence just in the back seat. And you can see here with the rear seats folded down, you've got a really nice big boot space. And with the seats up, it is a really, really, really big, spacious car. One of the things that Florence really liked about the Ionic 5 was that you could walk across from the passenger seat to the driver's seat across the flat floor. And you have that in here, slightly less space, but it's a really big open space, isn't it, Florence? Yeah, and you can even put that up. Yeah, you can. It's got some good storage, yes. bits and bobs. Yes. So if you look here, you this can open up. That you too. can, you can open it. And in there is my phone where you've got wireless charging and just there. You can charge it and you can put lip balm and keys in it. You can put lip balm and keys in it. And it's got some. You can put lots of stuff in it. Yeah, you can. It's got bottle holders just here. So we've got two bottles there. Yeah, and, and my bottom over there. And Florence's bottle's in the door card. And, and there's a number there. There's a number there. And you've got obviously the door card this Don't side. So to lots of space. It. Thank you, Floz. So we'll take you around to the back. Back, end's, back end looks pretty good. My preference is the front, but there's some cars which we've had recently where the front end looks really good, but I've absolutely hated the rear of the car, but not the case with this. I do think it looks really nice. Predominantly, I drive the Model 3 and it's a hard ride and it's very low um, because it's performance and it's on 20 inch wheels. This has a completely different feel entirely. It's really smooth, it's a very comfortable ride, and it's quite nice, I'm enjoying it, I've got to say. It it's a much more relaxed drive. Me and James have done some quite long distances in the Model 3 and they've not been enjoyable, but I feel like in this it, it would be. My turn, Mama. Go on then, what have you got to say about the ride? So we just um, drive past the farm and I could smell some too. That's good. Florence, so do you do you think this is comfortable? Would you be able to fall asleep in this if we went on a long drive? Um, yes, but only if it had a bed. Right, okay. So I just want to feel what the acceleration is like from standstill. And that's my foot right down. And it's okay. It's not, it had to seem to have initially a bit of a, a lag, but when it's, there's almost a point where it kicks in and then it's it's super fast. Is it fun in the back, Daddy? Um, it is fun in the back, darling. It's very big. It's, it's different big too. Is it? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. Good. So would I have one? Um, my initial feeling when I first saw it was no. Um, just because of the size of it, the width of it. But the more I'm driving it, the more I'm liking it. And I think... I could get used to the width and I think I would do that quite quickly. I really love the feeling of space. I love the comfort. The boot looks like it's a decent size for all of our stuff. 
the downsides are the fact that it doesn't have a frunk, which like I said, we use, we use a lot. Um, and it's not as fast as some of the other electric cars that we've driven. But I guess, you know, that would be something you could just get used to. We don't often go particularly fast with a Florence in the car, do we? Florence just made a really good point and she's right. It, she said that it's really quiet in here and it is. It's a really calm, quiet experience driving this. In, especially in comparison to some of the other EVs we've driven recently where we've, we've talked a lot about the noise, haven't we, from the roads. But you don't have that with this, it's very well insulated. So I always get asked the question, would I swap our Tesla Model 3 for this? And there's certain things about it which yes, I would swap it for, but I would miss certain things about the Tesla. So for the comfort, the quietness, the overall ride, yes I would, because the Model 3 is, is not a particularly pleasant ride, especially for a passenger, but I'd miss the speed of the Tesla. Florence, would you swap our Tesla for this? No. Why? Because I like the Tesla, but I only want a Tesla with an opening roof like right. this one, and it's going to be the same. Opening. So would you have one of these because we can open the roof? Yes. Okay. But okay. I only want a Tesla one. Right. You want a Tesla area? Okay. No, a Tesla opening roof. A Tesla opening roof. Well, that's mine and Florence's thoughts. We hope you found it interesting and we'll see you again in another episode. Something I miss from my daily runner is Apple CarPlay. It's such a useful feature, but also these 360 degree cameras which are much improved over previous variants. The area is big and you'd be quite within your rights to worry about these situations, but no need. A half decent turning circle means it's as easy as our Model 3 for navigating tight turns. The dash layout for me is a very nice balance. It's not too imposing, but covers enough detail. Although, there are plenty of layers when you use Nissan's inbuilt system. Glove boxes are often poor in any car, but not here. This is what I consider an adequate size, but for good measure, Nissan have popped a second one in for you in the centre. The Nissan Pro Pilot is also much improved and made much of this journey, which was mainly motorway, very easy. I noticed a much improved lane follow assist and felt it would negotiate tighter turns much better than our old leaf. And finally, efficiency. It's bad in the EV world, but when you consider what size this vehicle is, it's not all that bad. Charging at home, we'd be paying 1.3 pence per mile if we hadn't charged from our solar panels. Okay folks, so that was a girl's opinion. I thought I'd give you mine so you've got a bit of a comparison. I have just driven back from uh, Hinckley to Burnley. I'm at the dealership now uh, and I picked it up yesterday and took it down there. Uh, the whole journey I've done was 311.4 miles and I average 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. So that's actually not as bad as it was. It started off horrifically and gradually it's crept up and up and up and up and up. If I was to compare that to an ICE vehicle, uh, it's miles ahead. Uh, I mean, a nice vehicle of this size will probably chew through two kilowatt hours per mile or something equivalent. Uh, so this is this is pretty good in comparison to that. Put it against something like a high-end Ionic and it's, it's not so good, but different vehicle and this is it's big. Now let me just give you what I don't like. I don't like SUVs. I don't know why we've got them really. They don't offer anything more apart from a high up driving position, easier access, and they make you feel great when you're driving them. They do do that, so I understand why people buy them. And I don't like the front end of this. Well, I didn't yesterday, but now I sort of do. Uh, it's got a kind of a, a resemblance to Boba Fett's helmet uh, from the front. Uh, but yeah, it's grown on me. And not only that, everybody I've spoken to who's looked at the car, and that's a few people have all said, that is a beautiful car in a beautiful color. And I disagreed on both. I don't like red and I don't like the front end. Uh, but now I'm I'm swinging, I'm, I'm swinging towards it. I think if I spent a few more days with it, it would, uh, it would change. It's typical Nissan. It's built to a really high standard. There's not a creak, there's not a rattle, there's not a rumble. Got a bit of hard plastic at the back on the far piece of the dashboard and the lower door cards uh, where you, you kick and scratch, they're hard plastic. But apart from that, everything in here 
is first class. Uh, I believe this whole centre console uh, moves backwards on the next variant up. Um, so that's, that's a nice touch because that would give you a little bit more space to add to the flat floor that we've got. And the drive is absolutely sublime. It, it, there's no other word to describe it. It drives f first, absolutely first class. One of the best SUVs I've driven. The suspension's not too hard, it's not too soft. The road noise is, is right on. I mean, well, there's none of it. Um, and just the refinement all together as a package is very, very good. So on to price. This is a 63 kilowatt hour usable battery, given a range, I'm going to say of about 210, 220, which is not bad for the size of vehicle. The price starts at 43,845. This has got two options on the red paint with the uh, black roof and the sunroof, that's also an option, uh, which makes it 45,070, which for me is just a bit rich. A bit rich. I would I would be looking at 39,995. I'd want to pay for this. The bigger one should be 45 because I've also got an 87 kilowatt hour usable battery, which I think should be around the 45 mark. This goes up to 60, which is, I think, outrageous. I do. I don't think anyone should be paying 60 grand for, for this. Not at all. Now, in my world, I'm trying to be a bit more sensible. I've come to the realisation that I don't need a Tesla and I don't need 300 miles of range. I just, it's just not needed. Uh, so why should I have a, a 55 grand car sat on the drive? So that's going. Um, we've ordered an MG4. Uh, and then this weekend, Kate sat there and said, well, this is really nice. I quite like it. So... Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows? Anyway, folks, I'm not going to waffle on anymore. I hope you've enjoyed it. I genuinely have really, really enjoyed it. If Even if you're not going to buy one, nip into the dealers and drive it because it's a very, very nice, well put together bit of kit. And I think you'll be impressed. So thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and follow us on Twitter at Kate Phantom. And we'll see you soon in another episode. So bye for now.